Okay. All right, so it's Sly Cooper. Yeah. It has been a long, it is a long, long road to get to this point. Yes. Now, there's a story behind it. Yes, which I'm going to tell now, because some of more and more astute viewers have been noticing that we may have been stepping on each other's lines more than usual. Yeah. That's because we're doing this over Skype tonight. Yes. Because we live a good distance apart from each other, and we can't just swing by whenever I fuck up something with the audio. Yeah. Which is often, because I'm an idiot when it comes to this hardware stuff. And that's exactly why we're doing this one over Skype, even though we played it in person. Yes. So, good news and bad news, dear viewers, all 30 of you that we have. At the Sly, moment. come in! So... Sly, do you read me? I'm gonna yeah, let Bentley talk. I read you. Yeah. Loud and I forgot very that you just started right Sorry, up. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Trying to break into police headquarters does that. Get over it, Bentley. You're safe in the van. I'm the thief here. I've got to steal that file from Inspector Carmelita Fox. Well, count on me to be your eyes and ears, buddy. Got their security system totally scoped. To get inside, you're gonna have to go through that air vent. All right, I'm going in. And don't forget, I love Bentley's voice actor. Oh, three of the you voice actors are really good. Yes. And get back to the van. We'll do the rest. Just keep that engine running, Murray. I'll be down in no time. Okay. Yeah. So. What happened here is, you guys have been listening to the show. You guys have been hearing the audio quality we've been dealing with. Yes. Um, I would like to start off with an apology for that, because <laughs> I'm a fucking dumbass, and I have no idea what I'm doing. It's a new channel. We've yeah. got excuses we can give. I still feel like I need to apologize. Yeah, what happened there was necessary. Yeah, what happened there was... Uh, this was my second time using the mic, and I thought, hey, hey I I'm going to actually sit down and play with the settings, and I'm going to figure out what lights? sounds best. Oh, really? Because I'm a fucking this. idiot, Master I decided to do this when my one of my ears was completely clogged, so yep. I was only, thought I was half deaf. Yep. Perfect time to be checking for audio settings. You, you can't see it, but my thumbs are as high up as they can go to the point where it's kind of painful. They're right up next to the mic because that picks up well on radio. Yeah. Um, so we set the mic stupid and then we set it up and we thought we had it good, but I forgot that when I get focused, I lean forward. When Humbug gets focused, he leans back. Yeah. And it was I'm a the problem. loud one. And I'm the quiet one. So that was a problem. So... We have my dumbass not knowing how to set up the microphones, and Humbug's dumbass going <laughs> like fucking Nico the Nitwit. Um, unusable. And, yeah, the Sly Cooper was unusable, unfortunately. Yeah. It, which is actually fine because our audio wasn't that great to begin with on that. Yeah. Now, here's the kicker. Some of you in our most recent episodes may have noticed, hey, the audio quality suddenly got really better. That's because somebody actually stopped and told me about what compression was. Yes. I felt like a fucking dumbass. Shoutouts to our friend Stank. Yes, thank you. Stank, you are beautiful for telling me about this. We love and you. And spending those hours sitting there just regurgitating everything you know about audio editing at me. I do appreciate it, no matter how much of a whiny bitch I sounded at the end of that conversation. Yep. Because, holy crap, it went from taking hours to trying to manually fix our audio in this ghetto-ass free program to realizing, wait, I'm using Premiere. It has some of the best audio editing in the industry. Why am I not just using the automatic sliders? Yep, pretty much. So, yeah, that's our story of how Mage is a fucking idiot. Yep, and now you get to watch Humbug be a fucking idiot because I was the one playing most of this time. Yes, Humbug was the one behind the controls. Now, yes. the good news about doing it this way is I have already Criminal. gone through and edited down a lot of our failures. Yes. Because there were quite a few on a few of these levels. You foolish <laughs> raccoon. I Just a few. Red -handed. Ah, Carmelita. I haven't seen you since I gave you the slip and I love Carmelita because she has, like, the Firestone of India. different voice in every game uh, and a different design in every game as well. Hey, it's just you know, kind of crazy. Really she's not the same person, it seems like, but every yeah, time she's it. called Carmelita. 
Huh. This pistol packs a paralyzing in the punch. second game, she actually shares a voice actress um, with spree. Crystal from uh, Star Fox Assault. Time for that once you're oh, I bet you love that. Bars. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I was listening to her and I'm like, that sounds really familiar. I'm going to look this up. Yep, Alicia Gladwell. <laughs> nope. So, on the note of editing, and then we'll finally have this housekeeping business out of the way. Mm -hmm. Uh... Every first run is still in here. Yeah. So whenever Humbug fucks up, you'll still see it. We're not yes. being huge cowards and going like, hey, check out our perfect run. And we'll be no. sure to tell you when we failed many, many times. Yeah. Oh, the final boss was miserable. It took well, you like that's because we were miserable at that point. That was the last thing we did in the recording session. Once again, and this is true. It was hard. Yeah, it slip. took us a half hour I to beat the damn thing. Oh, well God. Finally, the secret police file I've been searching for all I love these the dialogue years. in this game. With well, this, in these games, actually. Like, possession of our I hope the movie treasure. keeps the same tone, began when I because was these are bouncing made like knee. movies. You see, I come yeah. from a long line of master thieves who kept all their secrets of sneaking and stealing in an ancient book. The Thievius huh. Raccoon. Only one of those Anyone characters Reddit shown was used in Sly Cooper sneaking, 4, which, is why which we you go back in time and meet the Coopers. After all, there's no well, honor, no challenge, no yeah, fun. Slay four has issues. People. You rip off a master criminal. I think we're gonna get to that. Oh, we will get to that one day because these these games look a lot of fun. Well, the night I was yep. supposed to inherit the book. Also, this backstory is kind of dark. My father they fought to protect us, but the gang of villains known as the murder his parents overpowered him and ransacked our house until they found that shot where he was in the cupboard reminds me so much of the great mouse detective. Oh, yeah, that's a completely forgotten Disney movie. Yeah, for pretty good reason. It's not that great, but it does have its moments for sure. I recently went back and rewatched it. Vincent Broken Price alone, voiced the I villain, and I completely missed that as a kid. There that is amazing. My lifelong buddies and trusted crew. Bentley, techno also, if and anybody cares about this, it plays in all of the intros movie. to the Sly Cooper games, I think. We um, to track down the so I'm sure we could listen to it again if people bitch. Wait, this this, this exact intro? No, but the story that he tells is okay. told every time. It might not be told in Sly 4, actually, come to think of it, but in Sly 1 through 3, yeah. Hmm. Well, look at that. Yep. It, it's told slightly differently each time, too, but it's basically the same thing. Well, I'd imagine so. Otherwise, people would call bullshit on that. Yeah. Constantly. Yep. Like, it's been three games! Get a new fucking opening! <laughs> yep, pretty much. Use the left analog stick to move around the hideout and the X button to Nerd! God, I love Bentley. <laughs> like, not just because he's a nerd and I can relate, but because uh, he's just... He goes through so much character I've development, and he's got so much backstory and everything start. like that. And he's just probably the most interesting character in the whole thing. Not to say the others aren't interesting, it's just he's amazing. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on Sir Raleigh the Frog. Good old Raleigh. As a young man, this hot tempered frog grew bored of his life of luxury and privilege. On a whim, he tried his hand at a bit of piracy and found it to his liking. Raleigh, who quickly became addicted to crime, was brought into the Fiendish Five as chief machinist, where his evil tinkering genius rose to new heights. He looks so cute. The last reported sighting of this mad machinist was off the soggy coast of the Isle of Wrath, a small island uncomfortably situated in the middle of a perilous Welsh triangle. Now my question is, did he have the shitty teeth while he was rich enough to fix it? Or was turning <laughs> evil just like immediately your teeth go to shit? Hmm, that is a good question. Unfortunately, I don't think they answer it. Because I want to know how bad evil's dental plan is. Because that seems like something important. Yeah. Like, yeah, you get a lot of fringe benefits from evil, but what about dental? Because dental is not cheap. It doesn't seem to be included because a lot of evil people have really nasty teeth. I mean, doesn't uh, Radigan from Great Mouse Detective have pretty nasty teeth? No, actually, Radigan, like, keeps himself in really good shape. Well, I knew his 
the rest of him was, but I thought his teeth were bad. No, his teeth were fine. Hmm. Like, okay. all of his minions had really shitty teeth. Ah. Okay. That was another weird thing about that movie. It had a lot of on-screen death. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. a Disney movie, and you straight up saw people get eaten. They yeah, that's true. To grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relax, and only Bentley. one musical number now that I think about it. Yeah, and that's what worries me. Hmm. Yeah, that I guess it's a... kind of unusual. Yeah, there were so many weird things about that movie. And I remember as a kid being completely enthralled with it. And it wasn't until I was like 14 or 15 that I realized, wait a minute, this is just straight up uh, Sherlock Holmes. It's not even hiding it. I was just too stupid of a kid to not notice that. Hmm. Maybe I should rewatch it. It's been several years. Yeah. Like, I've recently gotten into watching the forgotten Disney movies. Like, the Disney movies no one gives a shit about anymore. Right, right. Like, I I absolutely adore uh, The Emperor's New Groove. Uh-huh. Like, it might be my favorite Disney movie. Really? Interesting. Yeah. I, it's not the best Disney movie by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But it might be my favorite. Um, like, I recently rewatched Treasure Planet. You done wine. There's so much. There's a reason that's not a well remembered movie. <laughs> Is it kind of forgettable? It, it's not bad, but it's not there either. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I rewatched Atlantis. That movie is full of great little one-liners and seems to be pre-built for YouTube clip compilations. Oh. But on a whole, it's just, like, not even anything. <laughs> so much of it was clearly just the writers had these little gags and side things. Like, the, the Demolitions Expert especially. God, I love that character. Holy shit, there's no character arc there. Mm. There's no nothing with anyone. That's According unfortunate. Amphibio, oh, I should I probably mention, in that case somebody has OCD, uh, we don't collect all the bottles. Um, yeah, there's no, no reason to. And I collected some of them just in case things were going to get too hard and I had to go back and collect them off screen. But eh, we didn't need to. So No, I don't think at any point you even completed a single level work. No, no, I didn't. I don't think I even got into the tens for any of them. I think I may have. the tens for bunch of them but oh, you never I? yeah oh that's because most of them are on the way in this game yeah like, like you in never the other games they're way. way hidden out of the way um but like yeah see i do collect some of them just to make things easier on myself but then yeah i don't like, need them but yeah this this has a lot of little flourishes of uh platformers of the era uh-huh like you see this a lot in the first jack and daxter game you see this yeah. in the spyro game that came out on the ps2 just like you have all these collectibles everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and I think in this one, the bottles are the only thing you collect. Um, same with the second one. The third one actually has no collectibles. Um, hmm. You do challenge missions instead, which yeah. I think is kind of neat, but I wound up not doing them because I was just kind of... I kind of played all three Sly games in one sitting because um, I bought the, co the compilation for the PS3. Yeah. And um, just... I had never played them before, and I kind of wanted to go through them. But by the time I was finished with the third one, I was like, ah, I'm not going to 100% this thing. <laughs> so I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, the early PS2 era and the GameCube era of, video, of uh, platformers, one of the things yeah. I noticed is they seem to be, like, starting to shy away from the collectathons. Because mm -hmm. you think back to, like, the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation 1 era, that's pretty much all those games were. Yeah. Like Sly, Super Mario 64, not Sly, Spyro, mm -hmm. Super Mario 64. Uh, I never played the Crash series, so I can't really say anything about Crash. I think Crash is a straight up platformer, but I, yeah, I haven't played it either. I think it has collectibles though, so you might be right about that too. Yeah. Like I know Donkey Kong 64 is a rare platformer, so it's a collect like just the worst kind of collect -a Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, Banjo and Kazooie is like that, and I could never get into it for that reason. Banjo and Kazooie is probably the best collectathon out there, but um, it's just not my type of game. Which is weird because I loved collecting the bottles in Sly Cooper. So see, collectathons <laughs> pluck at a nerve that I just—it's an itch I don't get to scratch very often these days. Location on this boat. Because again, they they shied away from it, so you don't get to see it that often. And this is one of the reasons I absolutely adore these like HD remix collections. Uh huh. Where it's like, let's Why? take a bunch of old games and put them together. I recently got 
on my shelf over here. Every single Metal Gear game on a single disc, except for uh, the two Metal Gear Solid Fives and Revengeance. Huh. That's fucking amazing. So even so like gonna get Metal Gear, oh part? wait, Metal Gear Solid Collection. So you don't have Metal Gear Two or Metal no, Gear. No, it has Metal Gear and Metal Gear Two. Oh as well. really? That's amazing. Well, also keep in mind Metal Gear and Metal Gear Two are like five megabytes combined. So yeah, why the fuck true. not at that point? Yeah, that's true. I have like, played those both, and I've beaten both of them. Oh cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm think I'm I'm thinking of doing something with that. I'm not gonna say anything on camera until I okay. actually have something done. But sounds good. Yeah. Um, ooh, things happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sly one's interesting because it's a one-hit kill sort of thing, unless you have a horseshoe, um, in which case you have more than one hit. Uh, yeah. And if the horseshoe is golden, then you have, I think, three hits or something like that. Uh, the other games have a life bar, and the enemies take more hits too. So this one is actually a lot more of a stealth game than the other ones are. But the others are more like a spy caper sort of thing, so it's a interesting trade-off. Yeah. See, I like the idea of a of of a stealth focused game because you don't get too many of those these days. Yeah. Like Metal even Metal Gear, scores. the big f stealth Metal franchise, by its end, and it's so shot. sad it's over, uh, switched over to almost pure action. Yeah. Yeah. At like, least you definitely have that option. Stealth is just kind of one way to do things. Yeah. Like. I don't know, I think a lot of games are switching more over to, like, they do everything, and it's up to you how you want to do it. Yeah, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, like, even... Oh, motherfucker, I just did it again. Uh-oh. Even Souls... Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, I have it I on my mind. I doubt anybody cares, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's more I care, because I need to think of better examples. Uh-huh. Um... But the difference between one and two, and this is something you never got to saw and you probably won't see for a while, yeah. is like in Souls 1, there are a whole bunch of weapons that are like, hey, this is this neat alternative play style. Good fucking luck getting it to do anything. Oh, like that's there's, unfortunate. There is one really hilarious weapon called the Dragon Bone Fist uh -huh. that's just this gauntlet. And its special attack is this fucking Shoryuken. Oh, yeah, I was an idiot here. <laughs> uh, yeah, you... There are a lot of times where Humbug is like, well, maybe, yeah. Um, Which is, is weird because this is my second time playing the game, and it was shortly after the first. Yeah. Well, that, that's always how it goes where you remember a secret, and you're like, oh, man, this is so fucking cool. I'm yeah. going to go show this cool thing. And it's like, oh, wait, it's not here. It's in the other place that looks a lot like this place. Yeah, well, there's that. And that one, I think, I simply forgot because, like, I found it immediately on my first playthrough. And then, for some reason, I had this weird mental block. <laughs> well, keep Probably in mind, we... because we're doing a Let's Play, and Let's Plays are difficult, but still. Yeah, that's because we were also recording at the time. Yeah. So you have the, the double problem of you need to be focusing on what you're doing on the game, and you also need to be talking and being entertaining. Yep, yep. And making points and interacting. And it's a hell of a lot easier. It's a hell of a lot easier to be doing it either after the fact or in the co-pilot seat. Yeah. Though, you should know better than I, the co-pilot seat has its own set of frustrations. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yeah. Gotta but, remember everything your pilot says, for one. Well, yeah, there's that, and there's also the, you know, I, well, you might not have it as bad as I do, but there's a lot of times where it's like, well, I could do that a little bit better. I think yeah. I could do that. I yep. should have the hands-on on this. Yeah, that um, makes sense, which you do a couple of times. Yeah. Well, there is a point in this where I do take charge. Yeah, that's what I mean. I remember when we were getting up to that point, you were just like, oh, man, this part's going to suck. I'm terrible at this. Uh-huh. Even when I was focusing, I couldn't do this. Yep. And it's like, well, what kind is it? It's this kind of gameplay. Oh, that's my jam. Yep. <laughs> and so you did it, and you still failed a couple times, but you did it a lot faster than I did my first time. I think I only failed it once because I was still getting the rhythm down. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Um, like, we won't see here because I've cut out the additional failures, but yeah. uh, I'll, I'll go back and I'll check the original footage, and next time we sit down for something, I'll have that written down, probably. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Assuming it even matters, but yeah. yeah. It probably doesn't, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. It'll um, be something to talk about. Yeah. I don't remember if I went through this whole thing or not this time. 
I think this one was the time where you just decided, you know what, fuck it. Yeah, probably. I, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. I love the do 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 Yes, it's nope. beautiful. Oh, I nope. guess I did get him. I mean, if I went through all that. Wow, I actually got really close in this level. I guess that yeah. was because I was just thinking that I think there's something good in here. Yeah. And I still think there is. I just don't remember what the hell it was. Yeah. Well, we could have at any... I could have at least at any point brought up like a guide to tell us what skills were in what levels. Yeah, that's true. I didn't. Yeah, it's fine. I was, no, it doesn't lazy. matter that much. No. I mean, we finished it, and honestly, they just make things a little bit easier and sometimes a little bit faster depending on which skill you get. Yeah. I think the one that's in this one is a rolling skill where you can kind of roll around a little bit faster. Now, here's a thing where I actually did remember the secret because I had a lot of trouble the first time. That, that little pipe crawling up that was a difficult thing to find the first time because mm. I have no spatial reasoning, as you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, oh man, I got really close. <laughs> yeah, I told you, you 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 got a bunch of the the bottles in this run. Yeah. Um. And I get fewer and fewer as we go. Yeah, because eventually you just get to the full point of just fuck it, we're not yeah, doing this it. This is not necessary. Yeah, and like you said, we got through the game just fine. The yeah. the only part that really gave us trouble was that final boss fight. And yep. Do any of the skills matter in that fight? Nope, not at nope. all. I didn't think so. Well. Uh, I think there might be one that gives you a horseshoe when you start each life. Oh. In which case that would have been useful, but then I died so many times that it felt sorry for me anyway and <laughs> gave me that horseshoe. Yeah. <laughs> which then on my successful run I didn't need. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good times, good times. Good times of feeling miserable. Yeah. You know why I like getting the bottles in these? Uh, these games, and I don't really like the collectibles and things like Banjo and Kazooie, is because the bottles do something. If you collect all of them in a level, you get a skill. Whereas in Banjo and Kazooie, you get yet another collectible. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That that bothers me. <laughs> I like I like the collectibles that unlock things. Yeah. Um, I'm completely blanking on any games that actually do this. I know I've played them. I know I've done it. Do what? Oh, uh, Grow Home. Grow Home, okay. my comfort food game. Yeah. Uh, that game is entirely a collect-a-thon. Yes. That is the whole game. But it's so charming and so... Yeah. Ooh, ooey gooey, I feel nice playing it. That's the one where you play the little robot, right? Yeah, you play the little robot. Okay, um, yeah, that one is a great game. Yeah, yeah, it's... It's my comfort food game, but when I was playing it, I was... That was about the end of my last job. Uh -huh. I was so depressed at how soul crushing that job was getting. Oh. And I would spend, there were like so many days where I'd come home and I would just play that. Yeah. And I would feel better. Because it's such a nice game. It's so charming and comforting. Like there's no horrible monsters. There's no soul crushing depression. Yeah, from you the just story do message. things. It's, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. That black sheep's a bitch, but you know. Hmm. <laughs> But that game, the, the collect-a-thon, is how you level up. Oh, okay. And if you get all of them, it's one of those things where it's like, hey, do this impossible task and basically 100% the game, Yeah. and you break it. Okay. Because in that one, you get a uh, infinite jet boost. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can see why you'd want that. Yeah, which I mean, by the time you're in a position to get it, you've already beaten the game. Right, but and then you nothing can explore everything to that do. you go going, yeah. yeah. That actually Which sounds nice. like a pretty decent time to put it. Usually I hate it when you get some overpowered thing at the end of the game when there's nothing else to do, especially yeah. if you require some sort of horrible boss or whatever to go through and collect it. But uh, that actually sounds like a pretty decent way to do it. Yeah. It's just you can now explore everything. It's like if you got an airship at the end of an RPG or something. Yeah. See, with overpowered stuff, I like the ones that encourage... Uh, Nope, fucked up. Oh, that's right, you have a horseshoe. I have a horseshoe, um, yeah. I love the ones that uh, encourage exploration after the fact, because uh -huh. map making's hard, kids. Yes. Map making is very difficult and requires a lot of work and a lot of effort to go in. Yeah. So I like the ones that the, the programmers say, you know what, let's show this stuff off. Yep. Um, Especially in the games where it's worth it to go explore. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, beautiful games like Grow Home are perfect yeah. for that. I would... 
I would love uh, something to allow me to just explore the the Souls games, especially the Miyazaki ones. Oh yeah, because there's there's so much that goes into those, so yeah. much. Um, and yeah, I can I can already hear some people saying, well, once you're good enough, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I but know. you still have to deal with the enemies. Yeah, and, I mean, I've been going through uh, one to record footage for something, and. Like, you have no idea how quickly it gets to the point where it's like these. They're just there. Yeah. Um. So, remember you during our one. Like, our two recording sessions of it. Had the damnedest time your first couple of runs, but eventually you got to the point where, yeah, you were you were going through and the, the basic guys were not an issue for you. Mm hmm. So, you know how it goes. Yep. There's a couple of zones where that's not the case, and I would really like it something to let me just explore those areas, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, just going through and uh, dealing with those dudes is just an added step, I think. And yeah. That's, that's kind of what bothers me. Like, I don't know, it's not that bad, it's just you have to get into this sort of weird slash and move rhythm. Um, sometimes you can run around them, but not always. Yeah. I don't know. Well, every single zone, if you know the route, you can just run through it and not yeah. have to worry about them. But if you want to explore and look around, you do have to take care of them. Right, exactly. Um, and you're right, it is an extra little rhythm you have to take care of. But, uh, yeah. Um, it's not the worst. But this goes back to what we were saying about end-of-game unlockables. Mm -hmm. There are the end-of-game unlockables that encourage exploration. There's the end-of-game unlockables that trivialize Jack combat. Like, yeah. Look at um, all this stuff. Must be one and, which are useless, I think. And you know what that well, means? I like the ones that. Tr okay, I like the end of game items that here. remove combat above the ones that trivialize combat. Yeah. Like, there's a couple of Final Fantasy games that at the end of the game you start unlocking things mm -hmm. that make it so enemies of a lower level cannot fight you anymore. Yeah, and then there's Final Fantasy VI, which has the best item ever created, the Moogle Charm. That's the one but that just removes random it combat, It removes right? all random encounters. <laughs> it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I but remember... Yeah, they, they've also got the charm bracelet, which reduces random encounters. So if you got two groups, one with the Moogle charm, one with the, one with the charm bracelet, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's the kind of stuff that encourages exploration. Mm -hmm. um, there are some games that that's not really an option. Yeah. Uh... And I'm fine with the end of game ones that trivialize combat if that's not an option. So it's just like, okay, now you can explore because you can just get rid of the enemies in the area. Right. Um, the one I really don't like is uh, trivialize combat in games that infinitely respawn enemies. Oh, yeah. Because it's still a pain in the ass. Oh, look, there's one of our random cuts because there were too many failures. Ah, huh, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought I, I kept every failure why. in, but I must have cut a couple of out. out. Yeah. Okay. You'll you'll be able to see the awkward cuts. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, will it's, know. It's no secret. Uh, Humbug ate shit this section. Yep. Must have done it just a couple of times because I don't even remember losing that badly here. Yeah. No, I think it was only once oh, or twice. Oh, I know why I fucked up. Okay. That. That. Yeah. Um. It's, it's because I kept not being able to see it because of my... It was either the angle or your TV or something like that. Um, like, I just couldn't see the spotlights as well as I could on my TV. Mm, yeah. And so I kept hitting them. Like, you, you hit the spotlight once, and then it activates the alarms, and then if you hit it again, you get fried. Yeah. Um, my TV is getting on in years. It's not the best. Hmm. Well, mine's not either. Just, so. I think it's just a different color tone or something that fucked with my eyes. Yeah, that could very well be the case. Um, but yeah, like the end of game stuff. I don't know. You're right. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Mm -hmm. Grow home I like, even though there's no point to it by the time you get it. 